and welcome to our virtual charity exhibition on the theme of journeys. My name is Sarah Fletcher and I'm one of seven artists involved in this exhibition as well as the virtual curator. So back in December, I brought together a group of artists having realised that the virtual format allowed anyone anywhere in the world to be involved in an exhibition like this. We made an exhibition on the theme of dreams. We then had the idea that we wanted to support charity with our art and so I came up with the theme of journeys as something which was quite open to interpretation and would hopefully allow all of our artists to relate their art to the charities they want to support in some way. My own chosen charities relate to two main themes. One is the environment uh, because a lot of my journeys relate to revelations in the natural world and the other is mental health and community and how the arts and community can help with mental health. I'll also be experimenting with a new medium in the form of using some coloured pencil on top of my watercolour. So enough about me, let's meet the other artists involved. Hello, my name is Karen Agostino and I am from South Australia. I have recently rekindled my interest in oils and am privileged to be participating in this virtual exhibition. The theme of journeys this resonated with me in a few ways. My artwork depicts some special journeys I have taken through natural settings, some being treasured moments in time, others significant journeys themselves. When I sit down to paint, I find it very calming and I like to immerse myself. All I think about in that moment is the canvas in front of me. I love using color and find oils very versatile and forgiving. As an avid bushwalker, I look to nature to inspire my paintings. The paintings I have chosen for this exhibition are mainly focused on my walking journeys. My chosen charity is the Australian Lions Childhood Cancer Research Foundation. My name is Bianca and I've been making art in different mediums for at least 20 years. It's a little bit hard to label myself as an artist. I'm first and foremost a beadwork artisan, but I also enjoy drawing, painting, sculpting in clay, mosaics and music. So the start of my pieces um, starts with the clay. I've got a white porcelain here and I've got a black porcelain. Um, these are just leftover bits from other uh, clay sessions. So I put them all in a jar, put some water and vinegar in and let this stand overnight so it turns into a little bit of a sludge. Then I'm going to colour it with all these beautiful colours. I'm going to mix them up tomorrow and then put them in little jars. Um, that have little needle nose nozzles and it means I can draw with um, the clay. I live on Yom and that means I've had to scale my work down because I have a very small studio. In the past few years I've focused predominantly on porcelain and stoneware clay beads, functional wear and components. They all have a natural and marine flavour. I make them with minimal tools and single fire them in a very small kiln just down the side of the boat. I combine my beads with found objects, wooden glass, and weave them into spiritual totems and necklaces. Working with clay makes me feel connected with artisans of the past and with nature itself. For my charities, I've chosen M&D and Me. This is an organisation trying to make things better for people with motor neuron disease. We knew a few people. I've had that. I've also elected to support Conservation Volunteers Australia as they run programs in the environment in association with Indigenous people and migrants, and that's pretty close to my heart. Hi, I'm Margaret Fletcher. I'm an artist from Adelaide, and I'm delighted to be part of this virtual exhibition, Journeys. Sometimes you meet a stranger and you see the legacy they are leaving for future generations, and you feel inspired to help them. This happened to me recently, where I met a man who single-handedly created a walking trail to divert people away from sensitive bushland and gave them a spectacular hike with beautiful views. For this reason, I've decided to choose Friends of Wake Conservation Reserve as my charity for this exhibition. Hi everyone, my name is Emma Morrissey and I am a fine artist based in the UK. 
For this collaborative virtual exhibition, I've decided to interpret the theme of journeys in the more personal way in terms of mentally and emotionally how we develop on our own journeys in life. So traditionally, as a fine artist, I've specialised in realism for many years and I would work in sort of black and white in pencil. But as my own artistic journey has gone on, I've branched out into loads of different art styles, themes and mediums. And that's also true, I think, personally for our journeys as we sort of discover new things and our tastes change. And I wanted to interpret journeys in my artwork in a similar way of actually using different mediums and different art styles to represent the different stages of our own personal journeys. So for those times where we feel a little bit lost to maybe use an art material which is hard for us to control and times when we feel a bit more defined in ourselves and what we're doing and where we're going in life, I uh, will be using a art material which is easier to control, um, pencil for example. Hello, my name is Ella. Creativity is my passion. I'm a freelancer in creating paintings, drawings, illustrations and an architectural creator. I have been painting for five years now and I love experimenting with all kinds of art. My mediums include acrylics, oil, watercolors, pen and pencil. I enjoy creating artworks in an abstract or surrealist way depicting my feelings or mood and impressions of the places I once visited and enjoyed. After graduating with an architecture degree in 2020, I decided to explore a bit more the amazing universe of watercolors while documenting my recovery journey from depression and anxiety through art. Therefore, surrealist art gives me the opportunity to express my creativity and my ideas about nature, architecture more freely. One of the aims is to create art that will inspire others to enjoy life more freely and bring a bit more creativity in their lives. I like to tell a story with each artwork I create, the story that's going to be different for each viewer. For my charities, I have chosen Mothers of Africa, the Smiles Foundation and My Great Art. First, the organizations are trying to promote education and relieve poverty for those in disadvantaged communities. I have chosen My Great Art as they are raising money through contemporary art to give to the refugee crisis and donate it to groups who can use it most effectively and help those most in need. Hello, my name is Zina and this is the second virtual art exhibition I have the honor to be part of. I'm still on my journey to discover watercolors. This time I challenged myself painting water in all its different shapes. I have traveled a fair bit and water has always been a protagonist on my journeys. I think if there is a meaning in life, traveling is definitely part of it for me. In 2017, I traveled through Indonesia, where I healed from a difficult year and from where I returned home with my future husband, who I met on a ferry and who brought me to the port city of Southampton. The people and the nature surrounding me in Indonesia left a deep impact. Unfortunately, I also experienced how plastic pollution threatens wildlife and how poor many people on these islands are. I felt immensely privileged being able to travel their country, while many of the people I met have never even left their hometown. As Indonesia is so close to my heart, I decided to exclusively support Indonesian charities with the art sold from this exhibition. And I encourage everyone to look up their brilliant work to either donate or just learn about them. Journeys come in many suits. Some masters conversations, dreams, worries, lessons or words. Some are small, a step or two down some unknown path. Others are giants, hours of places rushing by, each with a story, and the traveller, no time to hear it. Yet others take not a single step, but transform the landscape within us, our minds opening doors and our hearts growing twists and chambers, while we listen, while we struggle, while we sleep. All of it, all of life is a journey. The destination, who we are, who we become. So take me with you on some of your journeys and show me a little of what makes you who you are, who you are becoming. The morning sunrise greets us as a new day begins. This is truly the best time of the day to start my journey by walking in nature with my friends, enjoying what the day has to offer. This painting showcases the early morning view from the top of Murrieta in the Adelaide Hills a walk I do every week.
drawing me in to its harsh beauty where the sun kisses the earth, saying goodbye to the day. My senses awaken as I long to journey back to the centre of this arid land, Australia. This artwork is trying to illustrate that even if everything around you is chaotic and falling apart, having a dream will make you grow and prosper. And even if in that journey sometimes your head will be in the clouds, keep going as it is just temporary. Stories on the Tide is about my creative journey in the form of story writing, the characters that I write in my stories and their journeys and their hopes and discoveries help me to work out issues of my own and they remain with me, their hope and their excitement for the future. So this piece is called Distorted View and I've created it in uh, watercolour as it's a medium which I find a little bit harder to control. It's based on a photograph of myself from a photo shoot many years ago where I was feeling a little bit lost in my journey, not quite knowing, and I wanted to create a piece of artwork to replicate that in terms of not being able to see the wood for the trees. So then I've distorted the piece by uh, sort of moving some of the paint across to take some of the image away. In the Komodo National Park, I had the opportunity to snorkel with manta rays. We spent two days hopping from island to island, ate great food prepared on board and slept on the upper deck under the stars. The majestic mantas were definitely a highlight of this trip and an extraordinary life experience. Another trip around the sun, we take a trip and a journey every day, time passes, which is a journey in itself. And this piece is about that. I used layered slips um, and then after it was fired the first time, I sanded a lot of it away to bring out a softness and I used, I used a black patina to bring out some lines as if it's an old piece and added a sun. So that's my inspiration behind this piece. Time passes and we go along with it, whether we want it or not. As I take my journey back in time, this painting depicts my childhood growing up on a wheat farm. I had a sense of freedom, with endless miles to run and play, enjoying boundless fields, fresh air and sunshine. I remember these times fondly. Life is a journey, many journeys. Some start with curiosity. What is over the sand dune? But there can be many obstacles along the way. Sometimes, to achieve our full potential, we might need to overcome our biggest fears. The metaphor of the eye in a shark's open mouth. Without taking this step, we might end up sailing towards nothingness and wander through life without a purpose, being just too scared, confused and overwhelmed by everything and everyone around us. The clouds are a metaphor that would further emphasize these feelings.
meet Orange, my imaginatively named childhood tricycle, gifted to me as an old new bike found secondhand and revamped by my grandpa. Like all of us, Orange sometimes needed a little help from others to get by. His old axles would seize up and refuse to turn and he'd have to be towed by someone else's bike. But with a little help from his friends, he still got to make the journey. So uh, this piece is called Wood for the Trees and uh, I wanted it to be quite a uh, sort of natural process. I didn't want to do any sketches beforehand so I literally just started to go in with some graphite sticks and just make some marks on the page. Um, I then wanted a bit of colour so I went in with some pastels because um, it's not something I can particularly control um, and also I liked the sort of look of the, the dust left over as well. The experience of gliding down a calm river in your kayak must be one of the most peaceful things in life, especially if you have nature either side of you, which can only be reached via the water. The famous Buddhist Ramdas once said, ultimately, we all just walk each other home. And that was my inspiration behind this set of three wall platters. You meet people on a journey, your soul journey, you find them, you get to know them and you get to love them maybe, and then they leave. They either go away as friends or they pass away or lovers leave each other. I've used monoprinting for these three platters, um, you actually draw with clay a painting on newsprint and then use that to burnish it on the wet clay, the wet slip. It's always a surprise when you lift that paper what is going to stay behind and, and what is not and that's also part of the journey of working with clay, I love that. I can see the path unfolding before me, not knowing what's to come. This is part of the challenge that inspires me to travel it. Sometimes the journey is hard, but exploring and discovering new places and feeling that sense of achievement, once the path is travelled, makes it all worthwhile. I was young. I lived in the Brossel Valley. There is an iconic hill, half trees, half cleared, and can be seen from afar. When I went on holidays and I could see that hill in the distance, I knew that I was not far from home. And I still experience this today when I see that hill. After experiencing a very controlled, well-defined journey to a life, when we are finally given the chance of freedom, we might feel lost, overwhelmed by the fast pace of the life that was going on outside our bubble. And the majority of the times we just end up running back to the same place we came from just because it's more comfortable and less challenging. And the child holding a balloon is a metaphor for that. In A Foot in Both Camps, I've tried to depict the expat experience of moving to the other side of the world and also how forests and nature and finding those natural spaces in my new home has helped me to feel at home and to find my place here. It's 
So this piece is called Growing Pains and I've based it on my hand which uh, I have drawn in graphite and it came from the idea of seeing physical growth in terms of the tree vines which I really like the idea of sort of these sprouting uh, from fingertips uh, so that's the inspiration behind this piece. You don't even need to venture far to take some time out in stunning nature. It's right there on your doorstep. Go outside and look at it. Jump in some cold water, get sand all over you and your things, hike up a mountain, get your hands dirty on a rock, look up at the clouds, hug a tree and have a nice cold beer at the end of the day. I promise it's lovely. I physically love to travel and recently I visited Kuptan or Gungardi as it's called in a local language and it struck me how one person's journey um, and perhaps being a hero could be somebody else's pain, a journey into pain. The arrival of Captain Cook and the Endeavour in 1770 started a period of displacement for the local people and this piece is about that. The purity of the porcelain and I've used gravito scratching into the clay as a means to tease out the endeavour. And I've used some soil, some Aboriginal old soil in the bowl that can be scooped up with the spoon, which is made from a stick I found in Cooktown. This landscape painting in the Clare Valley area is one from the Hyson Trail, a 1200 kilometre journey that extends through South Australia. This journey took six years to complete and I can honestly say this is one of my most challenging and rewarding achievements. With bright canola fields in the background, the windmill stands proud as an icon of the Australian bush. There are many journeys we take in our life, but the hardest are within. Searching vast space. Suddenly, wrapped in a warm blanket, the bush engulfs me. I've come so far to reach this happy place. We travelled to France and visited Monet's garden in Chivigny. I had the strangest sense of being in a place created by a kindred spirit, of coming home to a place that I'd never been before. At the end of a journey, after we embrace our fears, insecurities, failures, we are actually ready to see the positive aspects of life and enjoy it more. The water lilies symbolize peacefulness. So this piece is called Grounded and uh, like the other pieces, that I've done so far, they are all quite personal to me. It's about the internal journeys uh, that we go on in life. So this one I've created in watercolour and graphite and just uh, depicts that sort of journey of growth. It's human nature to live on shores along oceans, lakes and rivers. This little island in Indonesia consisted of nothing but shore, with volcanic hills forming multiple bays and several beaches, each with a different colour of sand, some white, some black, some pink.
Oh, the journey of life in all its messiness and brilliance and beauty and pain and joys. This piece is about that. The hand reaching out, not grasping anything, just ready to receive whatever gifts the universe will bestow on us today. And then the messiness and the cracks. As Leonard Cohen sang, there's a crack, a crack in everything, and that's how the light gets in. I've used colored slips and scravito and all kinds of different techniques to get some color and texture on this. And then unfortunately, when the pot came out of the kiln, there was a little crack. So I've used the old Japanese art of Kintsugi, where the Japanese masters used a mix of resin and gold dust to fix the cracks and thereby making something beautiful out of something that was broken. And that is the journey of life for me as well. The cracks that you fill up with gold dust. And then at the end, there's something really beautiful as a result of the journey we all take. Here you've seen our journeys. Not all of them, but a glimpse inside. A piece of what makes these seven people who they are today. Perhaps your journeys look similar to some of these. Or perhaps you have been to places, in person, in mind, or in feeling, that none of us can imagine. All we can know for sure is the humanness of journeys. That for each of us, many different journeys make up who we are now and where we will be going. Thank you for sharing this time with us. And we hope that these pieces of our varied lives have connected in some way with you, our journeys interlocking just for today. <laughs>